Hi there, this is Mr. Mike for the Mechanicsburg Learning Center with another edition of Mr. Mike's Dino a Day. This is episode 72, 72 days in a row. We have discussed an exotic, ancient, extinct creature. Many of them dinosaurs, hence the name Dino a Day, uh, but all of them really uh, exotic and uh, quite interesting. Today's animal is called Gastornis. Gastornis, and it has been named uh, other things from uh, none other than some of the most famous famous uh, paleontologists in history, namely Edward Drinker Cope and O.C. Marsh, who uh, were the chief combatants in what we call the Bone Wars. Each paleontologist was trying to outdiscover the other and become the preeminent paleontologist of his day, and uh, they named dinosaurs and ancient animals at a furious pace, and sometimes they worked with a little bit too much haste, that rhymes, and uh, they made little mistakes. Not all the time, but uh, sometimes the discoveries that they make and then they name something, that gets overturned, and it has happened an awful lot to these two gentlemen, and then sometimes what they've come up with sticks around. This animal was discovered in uh, around 1855, and frankly, it's even tough to find the full name of the person that discovered it. They uh, give the name of Ebert, which looks like Herbert, but it's got a little accent over the E, so Ebert. Uh, that's his last name. His first initial of his fir the, the initial of his first name is E, so who knows? Edwin Eduardo, it could be anything, but it's uh, a Mr. or Dr. Ebert who uh, discovered the animal. Let's take a look at it. It is not a dinosaur. Now I want to show you first uh, a model that uh, came into my possession I would say in the very very late 60s or early 70s. That would make this quite old. This would make this uh, nearly a 50 year old uh, a 50 year old little tiny model. It is not a dinosaur. It is an ancient flightless bird and a uh, really cool model doesn't stand very well which is why I can't put it on a, a little cardboard tablet here for you to see but uh, it's very interesting and I want you to notice something very initially when you look at it I want you to pay attention to the beak let me put a little bit of uh, let me put some white behind it so it might be a little bit more easier for you to see what's going on. Can you see the beak there? Uh, if you look closely, the beak is hooked, right? Has a hook to it. Uh, very, very small wings. This is showing, it's, it's hard to tell because what you're looking at here is the tail, but there's really not much of a wing at all. And the, name, the, the animal has gone by a couple of different names in its, in its uh, history, or at least the history of us having known anything about it. Uh, at one time it was called Diatrima. And if you go to a museum today, not today of course, but uh, when, they, when they reopen, when you go to a museum in the very near future and you look at some big ancient what they might call a terror bird, uh, you might see something called Diatrima. And Diatrima was the name that was given to the beast by none other than Edward Drinker Cope from Philadelphia, famous paleontologist. Uh, but since then, they've brought Diatrima under the genus, first name of the, of the ancient animal name, genus of Gastornis. So, even though Cope named it Diatrima, and some folks still recognize it as that, uh, most paleontologists, most scientists now refer to the animal as Gastornis. Now here's a better model of it and it stands a little bit better so I can show it to you uh, on the white card again to give you a good look at it. I'll maybe put my finger here to keep it steady. A couple of things I want you to notice again. Look closely at the skull and beak now. This one is not nearly as hooked as this one. Hook beak, see that? A hook beak indicates that it's uh, carnivorous, okay? So when you have an eagle or a hawk 
uh, or a you know a bird of prey, they typically and invariably have hooked beaks, so they can pierce the flesh of its victim and get something to eat. Now, this uh, model is really good at showing the little teeny tiny undersized wings. So this thing did not fly; could never fly. Think of uh, uh, think of a very stocky ostrich. Okay, ostriches cannot fly, uh, but they certainly are covered in feathers. Look at the little tiny one. Let me show you from this angle. Maybe this one might be better. See that little thing casting a shadow? Boy, that is one tiny wing. Uh, big legs, strong legs, but interestingly, not necessarily the leg legs of a predator. This has really caused a lot of debate since its discovery in the mid-1800s. Was it carnivorous? Was it a true terror bird that attacked small, innocent, early horses known as Eohippus? Did it chase down things and attack them? Or was it completely herbivorous? Well, the latest scientist, the latest scientific research, I should say, is now pointing to the fact that they've, they've examined the bone and they've been able to look at some of the chemicals that were present in the bones of these things because they, they existed after the dinosaurs. So they're 55 to 45 million years old. So they come after the dinosaurs. They're mammals. So they look at the bones that they have and they can extract some chemicals from it and realize that you can tell a lot about what a creature eats by uh, scientifically analyzing the bone structure. And the bone structure is telling us that it did not have a carnivorous diet. Now, there's still some debate about it, but the latest evidence is telling us that these things did not chase down prey. They were not terror birds unless you were a plant, and then they terrorized you. So, Gastornis may yet return to be a carnivore or a terror bird, but right now, it's just a big, oversized ostrich with uh, a beak. Look at the size of the head compared to its body. It's a big head. It could snap up some plants, but uh, apparently it didn't snap up animals. So it was named in uh, 1855 by this uh, gentleman named Hibert, and he named it after Gaston Plante. Gaston. So that's where Gastornis, which means Gaston's bird, the name comes from. Its second name, the species name, and right now there are about five separate species under the Gastornis umbrella. So you have Gastornis, and then the second word is uh, Gigantia, Gigantia, now, or, I'm sorry, Giganteus, which means big. So it's uh, Gaston's big bird is what the name translates to. But uh, I'll give you a look at the fossil of Gastornis. Again, oversized head, and it does have a, gigant a giganteous beak, but it doesn't really have the sharp hooked beak like we see in the early model. So, again, right now it is herbivorous. Strong legs, but not necessarily agile legs that would allow it to turn quickly and chase down food. Uh, it probably was a good runner. I don't know why I would have to chase a plant, but nonetheless. So uh, I mentioned O.C. Marsh earlier and his uh, bone war against uh, Edward Drinker Cope. Well, of course, O.C. Marsh weighed in on this uh, particular beast. They found a toe bone, one toe bone, mind you, one toe bone. And based on that, in 1894, he named this thing Barornis. Barornis, again, the same beast, Diatrima, Gastornis, Barornis. It's gone by several names, but these names keep getting cast aside in uh, favor of Gastornis. So it definitely, with a, a head that size, had a powerful bite, but uh, it didn't have a prominently hooked beak. So it bit hard, but not necessarily on living animals. So let's get to a story that I wrote for Volume 3 of Dinerific Poetry that mentions Gastornis and what I would say now, the, uh, the fallacy that it was a carnivorous bird, at least until we get more research. Now, this uh, poem mentions a couple of different animals, and I believe that, quite frankly, Gastornis will probably end up deserving its very own poem. But right now, 
where it is, uh, we're going to read the story where it is included in a poem. This poem is called Your Dinerific, written by Mr. Mike and illustrated by my son Ethan. By the way, I want to give you a shot at the Gastornis illustration that Ethan did. Pretty cool. Pretty true in terms of the big head, strong legs, but not necessarily a severely hooked beak. This story mentions a gigantic dragonfly. Dragonfly with a wingspan of nearly three feet. It mentions a dinosaur that had a hollow crest named Corythosaurus. And then, of course, it mentions our friend Gastornis. Your Dinerific by Mr. Mike, brought to you by the Mechanicsburg Learning Center. We do this every day, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, live on Facebook, and we post all the videos to YouTube. Just go looking for Mr. Mike Scrignoli, and they will all be there. We'll have a special announcement tomorrow about the future of the segment. We'll tell you more about that tomorrow and uh, what the future is. Your Dinerific. The Meganura Dragonfly, its wingspan was astounding. They grew to nearly three feet wide and ate most things surrounding. In Carboniferous they reigned, but let me be specific. A giant bug is cool, but you're the one that's dinerific. Corythosaurus had a hollow crest through which he snorted. <laughs> so he produced some lower tones. That's what has been reported. Now all of this is verified by minds most scientific. A crested dino's neat, but you're the one it's dinerific. Gastornis was a six-foot, nasty, gnashing, feathered creature, but evidence keeps changing, so you'd better ask your teacher. Now, if he did eat meat, you could have nightmares most horrific, and angry birds unique, but you're the one that's dinerific. The world has seen amazing beasts with qualities impressive. Now, some were rather shy, while others they were more aggressive. And yes, there will be millions more, some even more terrific. But nothing could compare to you, because you're Dinerific. You're Dinerific from Dinerific Poetry, Volume 3, written by Mr. Mike, illustrated by my son Ethan, brought to you by the Mechanicsburg Learning Center. Wonderful, wonderful uh, times we're living through. It gives us plenty of time to explore exotic new creatures. So I want to thank you so much for watching live on Facebook every day, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I want to thank you for subscribing and liking our videos on YouTube. We will do it again tomorrow, and I will have an announcement of the future of the Dino a Day segment. So stay tuned, and we'll tell you all about it tomorrow. Thanks for watching.